Hello everyone, my name is Seth the Wolf, and welcome back to Memories Dogma, Code 1. It's been a rough night, guys. Um, as you can see, I'm not in my normal location. Um, I'm actually um, out for spring break, and this is just kind of like an emergency little... Not emergency, but like this is sort of like a ragtag setup I've got here. It's not as good as my other setup, but I'm sure you guys can't really tell the difference because all you see is my face. But... Um, the point is, I've been trying to record all night. I tried recording Five Nights at Freddy's. I tried recording two other games that I have, that are, like, new, that I haven't, like, gotten to do yet, and I wanted to. But I was having FPS issues. I also tried recording Ori in the Blind Forest. But, like, I've tried to record so many different things tonight, and not one of them has worked because this new setup, um... It's a little bit rougher on my computer, and so I think I'm just gonna try doing Memories Dogma, or like, visual novel in general, just because, like, um, it's not as hard on the computer, it doesn't require as much FPS, so at least that's my observation, I don't really know much about computers, so, uh, but regardless, I'm gonna get back into this, um, I am happy to get back into this, it's not like I hate this game, like, I was kinda hoping to sort of alternate between Nekopara and, like, a non-visual novel game um, for a while. But, uh, oh well, we could just switch between these two for a while. Um, it's not like I really have much of a choice at this point. But uh, as for Memories Dogma, um, if I remember correctly, we just got done investigating, like, this explosion that happened. Like, yeah, you can see in the background there. But, uh, yeah, so we thought that um, our friend had died but apparently not. Um, Kakazu, that was right. Um, so I guess we're gonna get right into it, guys. So, here we go. Oh gosh, I, I just remembered I can't be like all, Happy Nekopara voices! Oh boy! Girl, cat girl maids! It's like, no, we're dark, we're depressing. Things are happening and people are dead. It's just how life is. No, oh, I gotta get into that depressing mindset. Alright. Just think of dead puppies. <clears throat> All right. As our conversation finishes up, we spot a young man in a police uniform and wearing silver rimmed glasses running up to us. Oh. Ah, so this is where you were, Officer uh, Kanzaki. Yonakura Senpai! Have the analysis results come in yet? Looks like this Yonakura fellow is a police officer too, and an acquaintance of Haruna's. They just came in. I see! Good work! Oh man, I have to remember all the voices again. I think I gave her like a relatively high-pitched one. Haruna, sa sa uh, Haruna salutes crisply. Jeez. Making you wonder if she really is the same person that had been so lax a few moments ago. This is the first time I've ever seen her act like a proper police officer. Hmm. Uh, who are these young fellows with you? We quickly explain our situation to Yonakura-san. Um, surprised he's okay with that. <laughs> so that's what happened. Thank you for looking after Officer Kanzaki. I'm Yonakura Suguru, from the Forensics Department. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Okay. I've never actually, like, actually seen anyone from a Forensics Department. Like, obviously I've never seen, like, a freaking what's it called, a crime scene, but, like, it, I feel like you, like, you meet police officers all the time, like, when they're off the job, or, like, if they're even on the job, you can talk to them. Like, what am I saying? Like, I guess I have experience with it from, like, high school, is what I'm referring to. Because, like, you know how in high school they would always have, like, the police officers stationed around? Um, just, like, I don't know, stationed in the school? I don't really even understand how that works. Um, but, uh, oh, well, I'm just talking at my ass. <laughs> Point is, I've never met anyone from a forensics department. Ah, uh, nice to meet you, too. If not for his uniform, you'd never be able to tell this Yonakuda guy was a police officer. He looks far too nice and gentle. If you put him next to Haruna, they look more like a peaceful pair of siblings than police officers. Uh, yeah, uh, Officer Kanzaki. Inspector Yusenjai was looking for you. He's over there by the department store. Ah, uh, understood. Thank you for informing me. Looks like these two are investigating together with, uh, Ryusenji. Uh, Ryusenji. That's right, the guy we saw earlier. Okay. Haruna turns back to us and bows. Thank you all for your help! I can walk just fine now, so we'll be parting ways here. 
Thank you again for taking care of our officer here. Ah, but we still need you to leave this place as fast as possible. I was wondering about that, like, we're not really supposed to be here. The forensics department has already started their investigation as well. I understand. Sorry for being in the way. We found the friend we were looking for, so we'll be on our way as well. That'd be a huge help. Thanks. Oh, his face is kind of determined there. We haven't caught the culprit yet either, so it's still dangerous. Leave as fast as you can, you hear me? Just as he says that, Yonakura-san surveys the area with a nervous expression. As he does so, Kakadu elbows me lightly and brings his face closer to mine. Hear that? Is said culprit. That means explosion was caused by someone. Looks like it. We should hurry up and get out of... Uh oh. I gulp as I see Ryu Senji-san appear at the turning the corner at the end of the street. He definitely sees us too and starts running towards us. His face is a storm of rage. What are you guys doing over here? I thought I told you to go back! After yelling at us, he turns to Haruna and Yonakuda-san. Ah! Master! Good work! Haruna and Yonakuda-san stand up even straighter than usual as they salute Ryu Senji-san. What are you two doing dawdling over here? Uh, sorry, sir! My apologies, sir! So, what about the other two girls you were with? Where'd they go? I haven't seen Akane and Emma ever since they gave Reese and Jisan the slip. Sorry, we don't know where they were- we don't really know where they went either. I see. At any rate, you three need to get out of here as fast as possible. Understood. Come on, Reina, let's go. Oh yeah, Reina's been here this whole time. As I turn back to Reina, I can tell she isn't listening. She's staring at the black smoke rising up from the destroyed station and looks like she's deep in thought. Reina, are you okay? Uh, oh yeah, I'm fine. Sorry. It's just... I've got a really bad feeling about this. As she says that, Reina peels her eyes away from the smoke cloud. It's true the spectacle around us is completely out of the ordinary, so I can kind of understand what Reina's feelings. What Reina's feelings are, or Reina's feelings. Read the fucking lines! Gosh. It's been a rough night, guys. I'm sorry. It's late, and I'm trying to do this as best I can, but holy shit. Let's go. I was about to say that today now. Suddenly. Huh? All of you, run! We hear Akane's piercing yell, even from this far away. As I turn in the direction of the voice, I see Akane and Emma further down the road, running towards us. Wait, it's not just Emma and Akane, there's one more person. Huh? Who the fuck are you? Oh my god. A man who looks like a giant black shadow is also running towards us. He's very tall, he has a sharp glint in his eye. His presence is immense. As they get closer, you can tell Akane and Emma are chasing him. Who on earth is he? As I look at his right arm, I see something that I'm unable to tear my eyes away from. Glinting in the crimson evening light, a blade dyed red with blood. We're still a good distance away from them, but I can clearly make out the weapon. Explosion, blade, slasher, culprit. A lot of words associated with that image flash through my mind. That combined with the strange actions of the man and the blade he's holding connect everything together for me. I remember what yonakura san had just said, that the culprit still hadn't been caught. Is that man running towards us right now the culprit? Suddenly, a figure appears from the shadows, interposing themselves between the man and us. It's a young woman. She's looking around unsteadily, as if searching for someone. She has the worst timing possible. It's all too easy to guess what's about to happen next. It feels like somebody has knocked the wind out of me. I can't breathe. The woman notices us and looks this way with a slightly dazed expression. Because of that, she doesn't realize what's coming from behind her. Akane shouts something at her. The woman finally notices and turns around, but it's too late. The man's already too close and he raises it high. It which I originally thought was some kind of blade he was holding. It turns out to be his arm. From his shoulder up until about halfway down his arm, it looks like a normal human arm. But from on, then onward, it's a sharp-edged blade. It looks as if a blade has melted into and become one with his arm. The man swings his hum huge arm blade down. In that moment, no one can utter a single sound. Even the woman about to be cut down doesn't say a word. Or at least if she does, I don't hear it. The huge blade comes with the woman's left shoulder at an angle cutting straight through it until it reaches the ground. Oh my god, did you just die? What the hell? 
right after the huge sound of the blade impacting the ground, you can hear two thuds as the thing which used to be a woman. Oh my god, the thing that used to be a woman hits the ground. Holy shit. Cut her in half? Takes a few seconds to realize that there are two thuds because her top and bottom have been cleanly severed and hit the ground at different times. Holy shit! Oh my god. The woman lays on the ground, unmoving. It's clear that the crumpled figure lying on the asphalt is dead. From a far enough distance, it might look like she's just collapsed. But the huge pool of blood staining her clothes and spreading across the ground shatters even that illusion. The man lifts his blade, which had sunk into the asphalt, and without even a single glance at the woman he's just cut down, continues heading towards us. However, instead of running, he's now slowly walking forward. What the hell just happened? What has occurred in front of me just now is so absurd that it doesn't feel real at all. My brain can't process the information being sent to it by my eyes. The back of my head is filled with a sensation I can't understand. This is the police! Stop right there! Put your hands up! Or, hand and arm blade thing! Rysenji sons shouting finally brings me back to myself. I realize I haven't taken a breath this whole time. Oh my god. Oh my god, what the fuck? Holy shit. I hurriedly take a breath, and as I do so, my narrowing field of vision begins to expand again. My body, which has been frozen in place, can finally move again. Look at that guy's fucking arm! Oh my god! And he's got red eyes and white hair. Oh my god. Those blood... Well, no, I guess those aren't blood stains. It's just a visual effect. But like, holy shit, look at that fucking blade arm. That's crazy. What the hell is that? I look back at the man approaching us. He's looking towards ryusenji san with his head slightly tilted and a faint smile on his face. Oh my god. Uh... As I look around at everyone else, I can tell they're frozen like I was moments ago, unable to process what's happening in front of them. Holy shit. Then, once the distance between us and him has finally shrunk to a five, about five meters, he stops. However, he shows no intentions of surrendering his weapon. Instead, he readies himself and takes a stance. Kazaki, Kazaki take aim! Uh, Roger! Ryu said she sounds words. Potter now is able to unfreeze herself as well and points her gun at the man. It's clear, her hands are trembling. I don't know if it's out of her nervousness, fear, or both. Hmm. Man with a sharp glare. That's not the only thing that's sharp about him, mate. The man surveys us all as if he's looking at prey. And finally, his line of sight settles on one person. The person reflected in his eyes is... Reyna? Dana. He's instinctively able to tell who among the people here is the weakest. Reina is the smallest here, and she's not carrying any weapons. Yonakura-san grabs Reina by the shoulder. Get back! <laughs> it's hard to describe the aura surrounding him in words, but just staring at his faint smile is enough to make your hair stand on end. The very air around him just instinctively screams, don't let him get close. At the very least right now, there are two police officers pointing their guns at him. In a situation like this, even a guy like him won't be able to do anything too easily. Right as I think that... Uh, what the hell? Oh, hi! Akane, who's finally caught up from behind, swings her spear down to the man. Holy shit! What the fuck is going on? Oh my god, is this like a terrorist attack and she's like trying to stop it or what? She's able to unhesitantly charge at the monster's man. Akane's rush was so sudden, even Rysenji didn't expect it. However, before Akane even starts her attack, the man kicks off the ground and jumps aside. <laughs> he sidesteps her vertical spear swing, and as he turns around, slashes at Akane. Yeah? Emma interposes herself between the two of them. She's holding something that looks like a shield in her right hand. She takes the blow on the shield, guarding Akane. However, the impact of the blow sends her sprawling backwards. Huh? Yo. <laughs> Filling the spot Emma had been in seconds ago, Akane once again thrusts at the man, aiming for his chest. But just as the spear's tip is about to reach him, the man twists his body, avoiding the thrust at the last minute. He continues his turn and fires off a roundhouse kick at Akane. <laughs> Akane catches the kick with the handle of her spear, but the force of the blow is still too much. She's thrown back. Akane! I unconsciously call out Akane's name, and she glances at us and yells something as she's getting back up. What are you all just standing around for? Emma quickly runs up to Akane and raises the shield in her right hand, standing between Akane and the man once more. Akane, are you hurt? 
while continuing to glare at us, Akane raises up a hand to Emma, signaling she's all right. Emma nods and turns back to the man. I told you to hurry up and run away! What are you saying? You two need to get away from him as well! Depending on the situation, we may have to arrest you two as well! That is true, like, these two are kind of sketchy as well. I trust them a lot more than this guy, though. We kind of just saw this guy murder someone. Come on! In that case, you can at least use those guns of yours to shoot him! This is getting us nowhere. All of you, drop your weapons and put your hands up in the air! This is your final warning! I mean, how is this guy supposed to drop his weapon? It's literally a part of him. Akane and Emma, Ryu, Senji, and Haruna. The two pairs' conversations are getting nowhere. I don't know if he's listening to their conversation or not, but the man's just standing there doing nothing. Everyone's staring at him, wary of any movements he might take at that moment. All right, well, I guess we're going to have to leave that episode here, guys. Cliffhangers! Um, a little bit longer this time around than what I usually do, but, um... I had, like, the little intro thing at the beginning that I was talking about all of my problems that I've been having tonight. So, regardless, I'm going to be doing this for a little while, so long as my computer can actually keep up with what that is. Jeez. But, uh, I'm actually going to be going on a trip to Seattle, so uh, I'm going to be gone for, like, a week. So I had to, like, get some recording done. Um, it's going to be pretty much this and Nekopara for the week, so we'll have to see how that goes. But, uh, it should just be those two for the next week so sorry guys but that's what we're dealing with so leave a like and comment and subscribe to the channel if you can guys all this stuff really does help me out as a youtuber and i will see you guys next time on memories dogma code one